Hi everyone and welcome to this special webinar brought to you by Supply Chain Digital Magazine, Appian and KPMG. Today we're going to be sharing insights on future-proofing your third-party risk management approach. Now in the aftermath of recent high-profile supplier failures, risk in the supply chain is now high on the list of executive priorities. Managing the complexity of third-party risk management, or TPRM, is a common challenge across many industries. Like the suppliers they source from, the employees and facilities that must comply with risk processes are often dispersed across the globe, making standardization difficult. In addition, companies face common problems like the lack of visibility or insight into supplier compliance, many disparate systems that make it hard to gather due diligence, due diligence information, and manually intensive processes with redundancies and deficiencies. So today, Appian and KPMG will discuss the toughest challenges associated with TPRM and how organizations can begin to address them. We'll discuss how the right mix of technology, skills, industry experience and process knowledge, your organization can improve supplier collaboration and institutionalize a TPRM program that supports growth objectives and manages risk. My name is Scott Birch, and I'll be moderating this webinar, which will also feature Gary Cassell, industry lead global manufacturing automotive Appian, and Rajesh Santhanam, principal advisory KPMG. Welcome to the show, Gary and Rajesh. Thanks, Great to have you here, guys. So uh, let's dive straight in here. Uh, critical issues facing the global supply chain and their ramifications have been in the headlines well, for, for, for months now, and they continue to make headlines. So, um, you know, Gary and Rajesh, I know you both have the pulse on this. One of the top priorities for execs is managing supplier risk and supply chain. What are the challenges that you are seeing? Well, you know, I, I, I'll kick us off. Um, yeah, in discussions that I've had, Scott, with business and IT leaders, they do often express you know, concern regarding how to effectively as well as efficiently assess risk with vendors, suppliers. And yeah, it's not just a concern of that sort of initial due diligence piece, but you know, it's also the ongoing as well as recertification um, uh, processes or steps in the process. And you know, with the current trend of digital transformation, organizations are becoming increasingly dependent upon external parties. And this only results in increased sensitivity to supplier risk. And on top of that, of course, the expanding, or you could say ever expanding supply base is adding to the complexity of organization supply chains. And you know, the third party risk management involves so many different stakeholders. And in some cases, often they own or co-own, you know, steps in the process. So, you know, the approach that I've seen a lot of organizations adopt it, to managing supplier risk or third-party risk is very labor intensive, as you said, inefficient and can lead to inconsistent results in the, in the process. And in a large number of organizations, it's also, you know, with, with these manual processes, it's also not well understood you know, which functions own what steps, you know, throughout the process. You mentioned lack of visibility. I mean, this creates challenges at multiple levels in an organization. You know, with these manually intensive risk evaluation processes, it's difficult, if not impossible, to really accurately track assessment status, which leads to delays of getting suppliers onboarded as well as recertified. And, you know, at the leadership levels, you know, this lack of visibility does leave leaders without a really good understanding or good view of their company's risk profile, as well as over, you know, that overall compliance status. And another challenge, you mentioned it again, you know, sort of those disparate systems, the, the whole data gathering process, having siloed systems, uh, as well as siloed processes makes aggregating all the information or data needed to ensure a robust due diligence, as well as risk monitoring process, really difficult. And then any of those follow-up actions that come out of that process, you know, these, what I've seen is for the most part, these are managed with manual processes also, which again leads to inconsistencies, can lead to gaps in the process, 
And this can leave organizations vulnerable you know, to risk that can result in loss, whether that be revenue, customer, or reputational loss. So lots of challenges out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, was say, I was gonna say, does, uh, does Rajesh have, have anything to add? I mean, that list of challenges yeah, think, is quite I daunting. Think you, you, hit, you hit upon all of the, uh, the key points there. I, I would also add to that, right? I mean, it's, it's, if you look at any large compliance, any large organization compliance process, right? It, um, you need to, it needs to be robust enough, right? And third party risk is one of those starting points. Um, it's not mandated, it's not regulated, but if you have a large uh, efficient compliance program, you know, you need to have this as in your arsenal, right? This is important. This is almost like a step zero, step one, you know, to your compliance process, right? So in addition to everything Gary just said, uh, we're seeing these challenges across global organizations eh, where reporting is, you know, another issue that, hey, all right, you may be doing all this stuff, right? But if you get audited or if you get, you know, the, you were asked for, hey, how are we doing on these things, right? It's not easy to get reporting on this either because again, it's manual, it's, it's labor intensive, it's sitting in email, it's sitting in Excel document somewhere. And if you're getting ready for an audit of some sort, you know, that's a massive effort, right? And um, that, that creates a lot of issues. To add to all this, right? I mean, we've got a, a challenge, you know, we did, a, um, we did a survey back in 2020 um, you mentioned it's a, it's a priority, but you know, 50% or more said they don't have enough sufficient in-house capabilities to manage these risks. Right? So A, it's more intensive. B, you don't have the labor to support it, right? And 75, 74% said that they need to make this a more consistent process, right? So everyone does it a little bit differently. Um, everyone has their own needs, but even within organizations, depending on where you talk to, who you talk to, it's, you know, which which part of the global form you're talking to, you know, it's very different, right? So all these add to sort of the complexity of how to manage this and, you know, uh, trying to get all this together for a large organization is, is hard to do. And then like I said, you know, it's, it creates a whole bunch of challenges for the, for the initial step, not to mention like all the things that have to flow down, this, flow down the pipe from there to procurement and to manage them ongoing. Yeah, I mean, like you say, it's it's a very complex um, picture, which is obviously, you know, why we're here today. Um, so Rajesh, you mentioned there talking about managing supplier risk in the supply chain is one of the top executive priorities. For, for organizations, what are the toughest challenges associated with third party risk management? Um, from a tough, you know, uh, I would say just getting, gathering all the information and making sure that um, you know your supplier risk, who they're doing, who you're doing business with, uh, you know what their organization structure is, you know what their you know financial backing might be, right? So doing that due diligence to say, do I know who I'm doing business with is becoming more important, right? Um, and that's not easy to do, you know, you know, in the global world that we live in, because you know you U.S. manufacturing company, you know, manufactures something, um, something out in the Far East or in, in, in Southeast Asia or something, right? And it's hard to understand sort of that organizational challenge, how that organization might be set up. And from our perspective, you know, we look at it uh, in multiple layers. We have an upfront solution for third party risk that at least gets the initial gathering. But we also have you know, additional layers of due diligence where we can do a, a deeper due diligence with them. We have other products that we actually um, can get more available information on top of what we can gather through um, through this type of third-party solution. And additionally, we also have a, a third layer where we do boots on the ground saying, hey, we think the risk is too high and we need somebody actually going to the physical building and factory and go look at this and talk to them. So we try to address these challenges in, in multiple layers, right? It's not just, hey, let's just apply a solution to it and it'll be done. You know, we look at it in multiple different layers. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, complexity in layers is what I'm hearing here. Um, now, Gary, I'm going to turn back to you here. What are organizations doing, and, and I suppose importantly, not doing, to manage the complexity of third-party risk management? Um, and even more importantly, are they being successful? Yeah, great question. I'll vary, right? Hmm. Um, yeah, and in regards to you know, the supply chain, right, with diversity of supply now an increased focus, you know, companies are, you know, evaluating how to better manage that risk of critical material. So they're trying to narrow down, at least to some degree, how much they can take on uh, and, and manage from, you know, their supply base. And one example of what I've seen organizations doing is, you know, 
and, and this is uh, along the process of actually procuring material. I, I've seen them do some of the, the near shoring to avoid disruptions that may come with shipping delays or could be other geographical issues that cause delays, could be capacity constraints as an example. But you know, when evaluating, again, you get into the third party risk management or evaluation of this, when evaluating moving that supply to regional or a near uh, supplier, you still have to you know, assess sort of, am I taking a all, again, an all eggs in one basket where I'm sourcing critical supply from, from one supplier that still adds risk, even if it's a, a near shore supplier. So I've seen some companies try to um, you know, mitigate this by near shoring a percentage of, let's say, a critical um, component they, they get from their supply base, and then continuing to you know, use the multi-source um, uh, approach of continuing to get some percentage or the remaining percent from what could be an international supplier. Um, and then I've seen some actually say, hey, let's raise our safety stock levels. And this really, it can be effective, but it's a cost. And it can, in lots of cases, it may not be effective because what happens in those instances is now you're introducing that risk of pushing up against or surpassing a supplier's capacity. Um, because you know, in a lot of cases, especially as you go deep into the tiers of suppliers, it's not just one organization that is taking some of these approaches. So it puts a lot of pressure on, on the supply base. And so it can be a very ineffective approach. Now, from the perspective of not doing, you know, I actually, I think, you know, just research I have read really kind of shows that, and, and there was one really interesting analyst article that uh, a number of legal and compliance leaders were interviewed. And what it really showed in regards to risk management was that the majority of those interviewed, I mean, overwhelming majority of those interviewed were really using a point in time uh, focused approach to manage risk. So about 73 to 74% of their overall effort in risk management was all about the due diligence to onboard and then to recertify. What was really missed in that process, which kind of came out was the, the small amount of effort that was actually in monitoring the risk on, you know, let's say the, the full part of the relationship. So the time between onboarding to the time of recertification, which can be quite you know, a large amount of time. And it leaves you really vulnerable to what's happening day to day if there are some triggers that you know, an event occurs, a relationship changes, and you don't have visibility to that, you know, that change in relationship until you get to that recertification timing, which can really leave you uh, quite vulnerable, um, again, to you know, a loss due to that risk. Okay, so guys, so what's your approach to helping companies with TPRM? So, you know, just expanding on my point earlier, right? So we've got a multi-layer approach, right? At the, um, we attack, you know, we've got a lot of business capability around helping organizations manage risk compliance. Um, so we work closely uh, with, with our business, business team on the compliance side, right? But we also, you know, with my background in technology, we've built, we've built a solution uh, that, you know, is built on Appian, right? And we built a solution that, that usually sits in uh, the initial step. It sits in the front of your compliance program. And as you're onboarding these third parties, or even if you onboarded them, you're a you know, mature organization, you're working with hundreds of third parties, you know, we, you know, this the solution helps you sort of gather all that information and go through the process of uh, manage, understanding what your risk is and managing them going forward. Like, you know, Gary mentioned recertification and, and sort of that, that ongoing process, right? So essentially we, we've addressed the, the five challenges that we had talked about earlier of, of having, take, taking the manual complexity out of it, you know, cre creating more visibility and transparency into the process, reducing that time and effort, right? And given that the data might be in multiple systems, you know, we, we, you know, we create that integration. So again, you're getting a single pane of glass view into everything and creates this sort of global approach, global consistent approach um, and creates the reporting that senior management or leadership needs to say, hey, you know, if, we, if somebody needs to tell me, how are we doing with our 100 vendors today? 
it's just as simple as going to a dashboard and, and clicking on a report that tells me where we are and you know what our risk profile might be, right? So that significantly changes you know, what your back office organization needs to do and needs to be structured with. And that frees up you know, all that manually intensive, manual intensive labor to do more high value type work, right? And essentially we're, we're able to do this because we're built, the, our applications are built on um, the Appian platform, uh, you know, um, that's sort of our initial approach to it. But like I said, the, the ongoing approach is that the, the output of the output of the solution can be then leveraged in multiple ways. You can decide to say, hey, I, I understand what my risk is. With this particular vendor, I'm good to move forward. And another action item could be, I need to do some more due diligence. I can hire somebody to do the work. That second level of diligence that you know goes and looks at their financial statements or organization detail or whatever the case might be, where the risk might be, right? And like I said, the third layer is really um, sort of like the boots on the ground thing. I need to send someone, you know, because the risk seems to be very high. And before I make a decision, I need to do something. So each of them has their complexities and you know, sort of uh, risk that that's associated with it. But what are what we allow that what we the approach that we take is we allow people to onboard their third parties into the platform. We can assess the risk. We assign some back office algorithm, algorithms that are getting applied based on that. And that automatically kicks out a score. It's a privacy score, it's a security score. We can conduct that due diligence based on that risk. And then we ongoing, we can evaluate and monitor. So kind of a four-step process that addresses like these, these five challenges that we've talked about. Yeah, and, and I would add, I mean, you know, I think as Rajesh went through there, it really sort of struck uh, me that, you know, one of the, the approaches that I, I like, not just in, in risk management, but across the board, is that more iterative or proactive approach versus that point in time. I think right. that, that's exactly what, uh, you know, this, this does, is, is it moves you away from a point in time approach to risk management and fills those gaps along that entire relationship so that you're in an, in an iterative process and sending signals when, hey, you know, there's something here that, you know, has kind of hit a threshold or it's an alert of some type, I'm more in a proactive state and I'm addressing those issues. And that really puts you in a position to be able to surface those risks before it's too late to remediate. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to re you know, to remediate before you end up with a material um, size issue, right? Before it has a material impact. And it also increases the efficiency. So taking a lot of that manual work, automating it you know, on the platform allows you to not have to have all this manual intensive effort in monitoring as an example, but now you're just responding to the events that say, hey, this needs to be investigated, or you've hit this threshold, or here's a signal that says mm -hmm. you, you need to take some additional action. And then you have clarity, uh, you know, clear ownership of what those, those activities or those follow-ups are. So it's, um, you know, it really does raise the level of an organization's ability. You know, it kind of takes them to a different level of how to perform uh, risk management. Okay, and what about using um, low code, Gary? Does that help to streamline some of the processes and challenges in uh, TPRM? Yeah, you know, when, when I think about uh, low code, you know, sort of the, the first thing that always comes to mind for me is, especially in the, the, the risk management or third-party risk management process, is that it's exactly what's needed to, to automate and streamline the process. You know, the, the technology enables that connection of all the stakeholders, the data, the, the process, it's in a single workflow, ownership is clear. And you know, what low code adds to the, the game also, especially if you're on, on this journey, of, which I think everybody should be on this journey of building this robust third party risk management process, it can do it with speed and it can shorten that time to value. Uh, yeah, if you if you take the low code approach, you know, and maybe just real quickly, I'll sort of reference back to some of the challenges that we've talked about and how low code sort of addresses those. So we talk about the manual intensive um, processes. I think everybody relates to that uh, in, in today's world, especially with the complexity continuing to, to grow in the supply base. You know, and what makes, you know, these due diligence, the monitoring, the recertification processes so difficult 
are multiple data sources, multiple stakeholders, you gotta bring them all together and coordinate all the way through the process. Exactly what you know, low code does. It delivers that workflow component, the automation capabilities that bring all these, you know, individuals or stakeholders, the, all this data, all these systems together in one streamlined process. You know, that lack of visibility we talked about, you know, once you accomplish having that end-to-end -end, uh, workflow, bringing all those components together, then visibility of an organization's risk profile, uh, the status of overall risk activities, you know, now that can be delivered. And then again, you know, I keep going back to it, it can be delivered with speed and quality. And, you know, I talked a little bit about that issue of, you know, so much of the effort being in due diligence and, and uh, recertification versus very little in that ongoing monitoring piece, which I think is understandable when you look at the challenges, you know, that, you, know, you just can't do it in a, in a manual uh, environment. But what low code does is position you to move away from that point in time to that proactive or iterative process. So I think it's exactly what's needed in order to get organizations on that journey and deliver that robust third party risk management process. Okay, and um, finally, it's a, it's a question for both of you, actually, but I'll go to Rajesh first. Um, what advice can you offer to organizations who are, are wanting to really get started in solving their TPRM? Um, I would say, you know, uh, the, you, you need to look at your options. There are a lot of options in the market. You need to look at your the complexities that exist within your, within your organizations and what makes sense to you. Uh, how important uh, speed to market might be, um, you know, and how sustainable really this is, right? And look, a lot of organizations have large IT departments. Um, they usually will, you know, go to IT to say get something done. The solution that we have, and you know, with, that we built along with with Appian, you know, really we can get something deployed within within eight to ten weeks, right? So it's a very fast deployment to the market. Um, it also doesn't require a whole lot of IT involvement. So it runs in the cloud, it's secure. We understand that the data you're collecting, clients might be collecting are, are important. Um, so it's, you know, it's got secure, um, it's, it's got security built into it. And, and really, you know, legal and compliance departments can offload a lot of that manual effort that we've been talking about in, in, you know, into the application. So I would say, you know, you gotta look at how important this is, you know, to the organization, how complex is your problem what your, you know, what your internal labor challenges might be and how important it is for you to get to market with these, to solve these issues, right? So that, that, that would be one of the things I would use to measure what solutions should I be going with and how important low code and a solution like we have in the market for TPRM makes sense. Yeah, that makes both sense. And, uh, and Gary, what's the advice that you would give about getting started in TPRM? Yeah, and I think, you know, Rajesh covered it uh, very well, I think. Maybe just a, a couple of uh, additional points there. Uh, yeah, and one is, you know, I, I think think through, companies should think through sort of when you're looking at vendors or suppliers, which ones, because there's been such a little effort in that ongoing monitoring piece, you know, kind of look at your supply base and identify those where you want to monitor more closely and what those trigger points are, uh, you know, that will only help you, you know, as you, as you deploy a solution um, to, to help you get to this, I'm going to call it the iterative process versus a point in time process. And, you know, as you're doing that, you know, think through the, the full life cycle of that supplier or vendor relationship. So, you know, there's a framework there that says, hey, when you're deploying, make sure you kind of think through the identification, assessment, analysis, remediation, and monitoring processes, and be very clear on the ownership of you know steps in those process processes. And I think that's where, as as Rajesh was talking through, you know, a bit of the the solution and how to kind of start that deployment and keep it. I think happens really quick. Again, one of the real powers of the low code solutions is, you know that in itself will help guide you, you know, that solution will help guide you through those, those steps. Uh, so it's not something you have to do before you start thinking about, you know, a, a solution, it, it can happen together because it is such a, um, I, I think a very robust and 
accelerated process and putting it in. And I think that's where companies have to go. And, you know, it's always the, the thought of you can't eat the whole apple at one time. But if you identify those most important pieces and get on the journey, then, you know, what the solution and low code will help you do is accelerate your path along that journey to delivering that full, robust third party risk management process. Yeah, and Gary, if I could just jump in there, right? I mean, you know, the reason we can do these things at speed, you know, obviously with the app and low code platform is, you know, we, um, we have a base process, right? So we understand how this risk management should work. Um, but what we built, the solution allows you to come for, allows us to come in, you know, understand what your process is very quickly within the first couple of weeks, right? We work iteratively, um, you know, take, take the existing base process and, and tailor it to your unique requirements, right? So if you go in the market and buy a, a COTS type product, you know, you have to build, you have to change the way you work to, to what, what that tool might want you to do, right? I think one of the advantages that we can offer is, you know, we can get you what do you need, match your needs, match your unique requirements, right? And sort of get you to, um, to compliance, you know, faster than probably you would with some, something else. So that's one of the big advantages we see with the solution and the platform that we have. Okay, well, look, I just wanna take um, a few questions that we've had um, sent in uh, while we've been uh, broadcasting here. Um, right. There's one question here, um, and um, oh, this is relating to low code actually. It says, you've mentioned using low code with the TPRM solution. How long does it take for this kind of solution to be implemented and what should I expect? Um, who wants to take that? I can start with it and maybe Gary, you can add on, right? But um, so with, we're, when we've implemented these solutions, right? So it depends on the complexity of what do you want to do? Like I mentioned, we've got a base solution. We can get that deployed and, you know, we can make sure it's branded, colored the way you want it, right? And has your processes and your risk, um, risk tolerances coded into it. Typically it takes about, like I said, eight to 10 weeks. Um, you know, so with, with some of our, some of our clients, we've done it in, you know, 10 weeks. Some of them have taken 16 weeks, right? It just depends on the complexity of it. But, but even if you think about that in the grand scheme of things, you know, that's a fully functional solution that you're getting that's in production in that period of time, right? And um, when you do have changes, um, and, you know, every, every product does, um, as you as you use it, you think, hey, I want to make this tweak. I want to make that tweak. Those tweaks are made in in days, sometimes in hours, uh, um, in not weeks and months, right? So that's one of the huge advantages of working with the solution that we have that's built on sort of the Appian platform. Terry, I, I mean, I don't know that I could articulate that any better. <laughs> I, I think you know, what, what Rajesh said is it really does, you know, sort of highlight the power of the solution on the Appian platform, just the ability, yeah, and things change, right, over time. Um, but the ability to go back and, you know, very quickly um, align with any changes that happen, whether they're market driven or whether they're geographical driven or just process driven, um, being able to do that quickly. And, you know, as we just talked about weeks, you know, I, I couldn't help but also think, yeah, we think about that delivery in weeks versus, you know, the traditional way if you're not in a low code environment where you're, you're into months or longer. Yeah. It's, it's a delivery of a full, as Rajesh said, a full production system that you're using and whether it's eight, 10 or, or 12 weeks, but we think about that delivery in weeks versus longer timeframes. Okay, uh, I think that answers that question. Thanks for sending that in. Um, maybe Gary, you can take the next one first as well. Uh, it says we have data across multiple systems that's needed to get a complete risk picture of third parties we work with. How does low code help in this situation? Yeah, so I, I, I normally start think about the, the low code data part of the platform. And, you know, traditional projects that I've worked on in the past, when you have that situation of data in multiple places, uh, the approach has somewhat been always having to aggregate that into, you know, whether we call it a data hub or an integration type environment, and then move it into this other tool. 
you know, where you gain a lot of what I think is true quality, real time uh, information, the ability to act in real time is that data anywhere part of the platform actually says you don't have to move the data. Yeah, you know, it can be connected and assessed in real time mm -hmm. from the source that it's in. I, I, it's hard to even emphasize the power of that in you know, today's environment where it has become more important than ever to have real-time information, to make real-time decisions and then act on that in real time versus I'm um, getting end of week or end of month type reporting processes. I think that's really where the power of the plat the Appian platform comes into play in bringing those multiple systems together. I, I'm actually connecting and bringing them into one view versus I'm having to take these additional steps, which in a lot of cases, you know, if you have to move data and transform data and go through all those different steps, it can come, it can become the longest part of your, um, you know, your implementation process. Yeah, I completely get that. Uh, Rajesh, any final thoughts from you on that? No, I think, you know, the, the power of the platform, right? So any relatively modern system that has data, um, Appian's really great at integrating with it. You know, I would say that the long pole there is not the actual integrating with the system. The long pole is maybe dealing with IT and network issues, really. Um, you know, that's what we've seen. Once we have, you know, that connectivity set up, getting access to the data, getting that integrated and bringing that data into the Appian platform. So to have this sort of single view, um, you know, and having this data available to you at any time that you can action on is sort of the power of the platform, right? So when we start these solutions, we actually look at what data do you need? We think about the data model first, and then we build a platform, build the application on top of that, right? So, uh, it, you know, it, it, the, the platform makes it, a, you know, very easy to get data from whatever the system is, right? As long as a relatively modern system, it's super easy to do. Okay, there you have it. It's all about the power of the platform. And uh, that's all we have uh, time for right now. Uh, I hope this webinar has provided some really useful insights into how Appian and KPMG can help with TPRM. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to Gary and Rajesh, and of course, uh, to you for joining us today. Remember, uh, this webinar is available to watch on demand as well once we've finished. So um, be sure to share the link with any colleagues or anyone actually who you feel may benefit from watching. Uh, this this has been a BizClick Media Group production for Supply Chain Digital. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.